everyone, Kevin here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Bottom Line. Uh, we focus a lot on uh, custom trucks and uh, one popular mod, or let's say um, thing that has been on the rise is Coyote Swaps. I know we show a lot of Chevys and everything, but uh, the Ford guys have really been coming out and been doing uh, a lot lately. Um, there's been a lot of advancements with parts and everything and uh, Coyote Swaps have been really hot. We're down here in uh, Gilbert, Arizona at uh, Fat Fender Garage and uh, Jason Newell um, runs the shop and uh, we've known him for a few years and he was actually the first person uh, that I knew or shop that uh, was specializing in doing Coyote Swaps or being able to handle it. Uh, it was still new territory for a lot of people but uh, we have Jason here and maybe he can explain you know, uh, why these are so popular these days. Well, they're popular because they're cool and they actually have a lot of power. And for the very first time, Ford has actually come out with a motor back in 2011. That was the first year of the Coyote that actually made the most sense to swap. There were a lot of other options before that, but even Ford over the years didn't have like a great solid platform for swapping, nor did they actually support the aftermarket world in swapping it. And so Ford actually, as they came out with this Coyote motor in 2011, they also started to come out with things called the control pack from Ford Racing, and so that actually helped that transition. And so with that transition, a nice, beautiful looking motor for the very first time, fuel injection, like the LS always had a pretty little motor with an intake, it just looked good, Ford never had that. And so they had this really attractive balanced V8 with a nice intake on there, it looked good, Ford Racing was supporting it, you now had the solution to do a Coyote swap. Yeah, and that's uh, a little bit of my question. Uh, we, we show a lot of Chevys and, you know, LS has been kind of the go-to. Um, and I think uh, in the past, just it's um, very easy to get one of those motors. Uh, and there's a big, you know, there's a lot of support out there. I mean, you can go to most par uh, auto parts store and you can find a replacement part fairly easy on these things. Um, so what my question is, why would somebody nowadays, um, we have that option of doing LS, it's been proven and everything. Um, yeah, we can get over, you know, having Chevy motors in Fords because I mean, that's been done in hot rodding since, you know, the beginning of, uh, you know, guys starting to work on vehicles. But why would somebody choose a Coyote over a LS? Well, for us, it became just really, really crystal clear the first time we did a Coyote swap, why we'd choose a Coyote. Now, prior to that, we'd actually considered leaving the old FE motors in them and a lot of that stuff because that was just traditional. And I actually was right in the middle of gonna put an LS in a Ford because at the time I thought, I want fuel injection, I want power, I want speed. And the LS has just been a track record of doing that. Like Kevin said, just for a long time, LS is just a solid platform and still is today. But to be able to have a 5.0, this cool motor, and have 450 horsepower easy and fuel injection, modern technology, going to start every single time you go out there and almost as easy as an LS, and when you're talking price point, an LS3 to have equivalent power or a 5.0, at this point it finally made sense. Ford had arrived with a motor that actually belonged fuel injection in these swaps, and so that's why we decided to go that route. One question I have is, I mean, since you've been doing it for so many years, like, um, was it a struggle in the beginning to make these things work and happen? Um, was there information out there? Like, how was it, uh, or how easy or difficult was it to start up and, and get going with these projects? Well, we actually had never done any fuel injection swaps, so I didn't know about fuel pumps in the tank. I didn't know about a lot of stuff. So I'm actually really new to hot rodding, so it's been a little bit of a learning curve. And so we conned a guy to actually do it in a truck. It was our first really true build we were doing, and we'd heard about these coyotes, and we wanted to do it, and so I, we pitched it to him. We got a motor in from LKQ, and it sat on the ground. We're like, oh no, what have we got ourselves into? And so it was a little bit difficult. There wasn't. I think there was a hot rodding magazine article that was out on it that was early and I would study that thing. I'm like, why didn't they put any information in here? There's literally hardly anything about doing a coyote swap in here. And so it became very difficult and just how to burp it, how to do all the little things you needed to do. And so it just became very difficult to figure that out and sort of pioneer that. We didn't know we were, we were just trying to figure it out like everybody else and put the time and effort into it to figure out how to do it. And so we did our very first one and ironically that truck actually came back a couple days ago for a little TLC and it's still here. Sweet, well let's check it out. Let's see what your first job looks like. And uh, I mean, obviously you said it's running, so let's check it out. All right, let's go check it out. So this is a 1956 Ford F100 half ton, short bed, stake bed, factory stake bed. So somebody bought this because it was on the farm, but they weren't gonna do a lot of work with it, but maybe 
putting, you know, who knows what in it, but it was very well taken care of. And this guy, Steve, he actually found it sitting on a, for sale for like six or seven grand and he bought it and he just fell in love with it. And he came to our shop and goes, hey, I want you to build this thing for me. And I thought, have you lost your mind? It's a steak bed. Don't put a bunch of money into a steak bed. You're never, ever going to, this doesn't work. And he goes, no, I'm going to keep it. So he kept it and you can see it's there. But I had never put a coyote in anything before. And so this was the very first experience that we had putting it in. Now, this was about five years ago. And so it's been a long time. And so I have, I don't see it, but maybe once a year, he brings it in for a little TLC. So this is a Gen 1 coyote. This is going to be uh, your 2011 through 2014. Uh, 13, 14, if we're using a Gen 1, is kind of the range we like to go with. Um, some of those little bugs have been worked out. But this is the very first one we put in. It's on a TCI chassis. We used a Griffin radiator. Again, we didn't know what radiators to use. We were just trying to figure out cross flow. You know, we weren't sure. And we put it in and we wanted it to look good. And honestly, um, we do a lot of the things very similar from the first two coyote swaps. We learned a lot and then we've now mastered. Now we might have a different radiator that fits better. We might have, you know, a different way we do the intakes and a few things like that. But honestly, he's been driving this this entire time and the cool thing is, as far as the motor and drivetrain goes, that hasn't been an issue. That's been solid for him. Maybe we've moved the gas pedal a little bit better for him as he's gotten a little bit older. Maybe we change the radiator hose out. Maybe we, you know, make a few little adjustments here and there just with the truck. But the drivetrain is solid. And that's the best part about it. I haven't had to uh, adjust a carburetor, clean out his tank. I haven't had to go through all that headache and grief that you go through just keeping an old uh, Ford motor in there. And so it makes perfectly good sense. Once we did this, I said, I'm done. I'll never do another carbureted motor again. Just, I'm done. Like th we're going to go full blown coyote swaps. And so that's what we did. This was number one. And I think we've probably done about 25 or 30 since then. So what, what really changed your mind? Was it uh, just uh, uh, the ease of running it? Um, you know, it's obviously it's a little bit more difficult than doing a, a carbureted motor or anything, you know, especially the day that you did it, you know, uh, back then a few years ago, uh, things were different and more difficult. But uh, why would you say you prefer it um, doing that over anything else? Yeah, excellent question, Kevin. Um, I really feel like for me, it came down to just reliability for one, power. So we have a lot of guys that come in here and they're boasting their 490, 460 built big block, all this torque, all this power. And um, they feel like doing a coyote swap was foolish, that this is the real power. And I chuckle and I said, let's go for a ride. <laughs> let's get in my shop truck. And I wanna just show you what you're missing. And usually that equates to how much for a coyote swap afterwards. The technology with the dual overhead cams and how Ford has been able to just over the years continue to make better and better and better with direct injection and all that has really proven that technology is better than cubic inches. And that's one thing that I've learned. When you have a computer running everything perfectly, it can actually outperform cubic inches and do a much better job. And so I was sold. I was like, this is exhilarating. One question I have, uh, which has been something in the LS world is people would find engines from salvage vehicles, um, get a motor, you know, for dirt cheap uh, and do that. Is there any of that on the uh, Coyote side of, uh, you know, finding something from your junkyard and implementing sure. it? Yeah, for sure. I always pick up motors that have about 35,000 miles or less because I figured they probably maintained it, go to the dealer for warranty work. Once you start getting 40, 50, 60, 70,000 miles, I start to worry how well the motor is being taken care of, if the oil was being changed and all that kind of stuff. And so I stick with low mileage motors, but there's a lot of good options out there. There's a lot of good um, junkyards out there, people who, you know, part things out where you can find a motor. Gen 1 motor is going to be the least expensive, but you can still find a Gen 1 motor out there for less than 50,000 miles. Um, Gen 2 is probably the most commonly swapped motor that's being picked up right now because you get a little bit more horsepower with it. Um, and it's a little bit lower mileage motor, so you can find those from anywhere from five to 10,000 miles, you know, to 30,000 miles, and, and they're really affordable. But you're gonna pay right around eight to $9,000 for that. Then there's the new Gen 3. And the Gen 3, again, direct injection, more horsepower, and uh, you're gonna pick up, at that point, a 10-speed automatic transmission, where in uh, the Gen 2, you only have the option with a six-speed transmission. So it just kinda depends on what you're looking for. But it's very common to find one uh, used, and you can also buy them brand new as well. 
Yeah, and so, um, like I said, you've done this for a while now. There's been some changes. So can you run us down um, some of the, the changes that have come with the motors and the different generations? I think you've got a few here, right? Yeah, we got a few here. So over here is a um, uh, Gen 1, which we saw over there, right? And the first one we'd ever done. And that was 11 through uh, 14. And so um, my memories are not great, but I want to say it was about 435 horsepower, OK? So then you came to a Gen 2. Looks very, very similar. You probably wouldn't know the, notice the difference very much. They added an IMRC uh, package on the back to help with a little low-end torque in the Mustangs. Um, not necessary in the swaps. That's something we get rid of because it, it kind of created extra, took up extra space in the back of the motor, so we would get rid of that. But after that, it's basically the same motor, just a little bit more horsepower. And so um, we wired up the same, it runs the same, other than the IMRC delete. If you do do an IMRC delete, then you actually have to tune that out with a tune uh, and make sure that's deleted so the motor will run and idle properly. But from a Gen, simple Gen 2 swap, then now we've moved into the Gen 3. And the Gen 3 motor has a lot of upgrades and this was a, a used motor but the gen 3 has this high pressure fuel pump over here and it's got uh, doesn't have coil pack covers because they've actually done a little bit more with this and so now you're going to get closer to like 480 horsepower and so a direct injection is taking the actual 58 fuel uh, pounds of uh, fuel pressure bring it in and run it over to this high pressure pump and then it's increasing it drastically to provide more forced fuel in there so that you can put more air in there and have a bigger explosion and get more horsepower out of it. So the problem with the Gen 3 is that it's new. And so like all new motors, it is a little more challenging to get it to work and function. Uh, the control packs just became available just a little while ago. And so you have something that worked with a 10-speed transmission, which is cool. Some people love it, some people hate it. it just kind of depends on your preference. I personally love continuing to push the envelope and I like to go more, 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 new, new, new. And so we have pushing the 10 speeds in there and making sure they work. And they're fast. The automatic transmission is fast. You can't, it's gonna be much, much faster than a manual. Then we're pushing it even further. And this is a chassis that's gonna go to a customer. This is a Gen, um, this is a Gen 3 as well, but we've actually got uh, Whipple Supercharger Stage 2 going in this one. And so, this basically is all that you're gonna want. I mean, it puts out a lot of power depending upon the pulley size and whatever you're gonna use is gonna depend on how much boost you're gonna have. I personally don't tend to push my trucks that hard because honestly, 500 horsepower to the rear wheels is a lot of power when you're driving these things. And so this is probably pushing close to 650, 700 power, 100 horsepower with the crank. But by the time you transfer it down to the wheels, it's a lot of power. If you were to look behind Kevin here, we've got a 1976 Ford that has the same setup and it's actually doing burnouts in third gear going sideways you got all the power in the world and so this is a cool setup and it's definitely something that was a little trickier power by the hour helped with a little bit of the front runner system on here for a supercharged system which works really well we use it all the time and at the end of the day lots of people have come on board and made it much simpler to do a swap in just about anything so you talked about uh, having a shop truck as your example, um, showing people you know, um, the, the power and how easy it is to drive a vehicle with a Coyote swap. I myself, you know, I'm very familiar with Chevys. We've done a lot with Chevys. So um, I'd be interested to see you know, if you can change my mind as well. You know, um, can I take a test drive in your truck? It's outside, it's ready for you. Let's go do it, Kevin. All right, let's go check it out. So as Jason's showing us his uh, 71 shop truck, it's got a Coyote swap and everything uh, with it. What are some of the modifications? I noticed the wheels and uh, are on here. Um, you got some new tires. I believe they're the Motivo tires. And why'd you choose those? You like them? Well, you know, what happens is when you're trying to decide what you're gonna put on your truck for tires, you come down to what's available. And Nitto seems to provide a lot of options for us. As we're in the shop, you know, we're noticing we had Nitto on a lot of stuff and uh, I would have thought by coincidence, but it turns out they have most of the options for stagger. So we got a, a little smaller one up front, a little bit bigger in the back. And so we're able to find a stagger set matching tires and it works best for us. And so, um, you know, 
we've done a lot of burnouts in this truck and i mean a lot i've actually gone through a motor because we've done so many burnouts in it but uh you know we still got good traction good tread on it and they've done a pretty good job for us sweet so uh let's go test it out i want to i want to see what it can do and uh what this package feels like and everything so all right so we're all strapped in in the uh in their uh shop truck here for uh fat fender uh I'm gonna go try this ford i'm more like i said i'm more of a chevy guy um, I haven't really been behind the wheel of a classic Ford, so uh, let's check it out. Oh man, already just purrs. Purrs like a kid. Wow. Like a coyote. Wow. Purrs like a coyote. I mean, it's like a mo it's like a modern truck. I mean, just the the sound of it. I mean, yeah. let's let's check it out. Oh man, already like I can feel it. the pedal feel. It just wants to launch. Let's not get too crazy. Oh, brakes, we need that. Yeah. All right, nobody around here. Wow, I did not expect it to take off like that. That was rad. <laughs> brakes too all right turn right up here and we'll do a launch this is what we call a drag strip right here nice it's a weekend so uh, there's nobody around here all right let's see how this thing takes off Wow, I did not expect that. <laughs> it's ready to go. Oh man, you're not kidding, man. No hesitation no, at all. No. At all. I put it down and dude, I mean this is the fine line of like keeping traction and right, just I know. getting sideways with this thing. Wow. I'm totally envious of this thing. <laughs> I can get into a lot of trouble lot really of trouble. quick with this. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that's fun. Well, I tell you what, I'm really impressed with the way this thing drives, um, but uh, we got a little crazy with it because it was a little bit unexpected. But uh, man, I want to see you shred a little bit. I know you could shred these tires. So uh, uh, why don't you take it for a spin and uh, right, show me it. what you can do. Let's do it, let's do it. Cool, well, I'll just leave it on, right? I know. Dude, when I came out here, when I started there, I did not expect it to kick out so much. So I'm like, ah, let's get it the other way. <laughs> Woo. Oh my gosh, that was rad. Well, thanks for uh, actually changing my opinion on everything. But uh, yeah, thanks for showing me around and uh, talking about uh, coyote swaps and everything. Man. Awesome. Thanks, thanks dude. Man. We'll see you. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed that video. If you did, hit that subscribe button below and uh, to not miss an episode. And uh, give us a like as well. That helps us out. And if you have any questions for either me or Jason, uh, just uh, drop them below in the comment section. And then uh, we will catch you next time. <laughs>